Hey guys, so we're back for another video and we're going to go back to security. This time we're going to talk about passwords and kind of password management for Linux in general. So uh, let's begin it this way. Uh, you know that there is this magical command which is called password on any Linux machine again. And this is what changes the password for a user. And it does a lot of things again. If you look at the manual, you notice that it ha that it allows you to not only delete, let's say, the the password of a user, but it also allows you to to lock it. And we're going to see what lock entails later. But it's a very useful command. And uh, if you want to change the password for a user, the first thing that you would do is you would use a password on that user. So, for example, as as of right now, I am the user void. So I'm going to try to apply this to myself. What I, what is us usually required is that I give my current password. So I'm going to give something and then I give a new password. I'm going to exit out because I don't want to change my password or I'm simply going to close this. Okay, I'm just going to give an empty string. And this is how you change a password again. Now, uh, another important thing is that you know how to log in as users. So you can obviously log in by using the kind of the login manager for your distribution. But another way is to use a SU command and an SU command is essentially the switch user. So if I try to switch my user, for example, to the root account of this machine, I can give the dash L flag in order to specify that I'm emulating a login. So if I do this as this, I'm going to be asked the password and the password that is asked is the password of the root account. So this is important. Now I happen to know what the password is, so I'll just put it in. Notice that I am now, who am I? Notice that I am now root. If I exit out of this, I go back to my original prompt. There is a second way of logging in as the user. And the, the second way is essentially using the same SU command, but appending sudo to it. And there is a very slight difference between the two, but uh, the, the difference is very important because the password that is asked of me this time when I use sudo is not the password of the root account, but it's the password of my sudoer. In this case, the sudo password for void, which is a, another sudoer uh, in this machine. So I'm, I'm going to input that. Notice that again, I am logging in as, as root, just as before, but I got there. But the, uh, the way in which I got there, uh, there are two ways uh, through which I got there. So one way was to give the root password by using just the su command. And the other way was to give the sudo command and then my root password. So there are two, there are two kind of passwords that are at play here. There is the root password, and there is your user password. And it's usually best practice to disable the password for root, because again, you always have an alternative way to get to it. You can always use use an sudo command to get to the root prompt without having the password of the root prompt. So it is usually best practice practice for you to disable the password for that user. And in order to do that, I, I just shown you earlier, but the password command, it has that very nice uh, kind of uh, option, which is the lock. And this essentially does what it says. So it locks the password of the account. It's essentially appending this exclamation mark to the beginning of the hash. And essentially it makes it so that no password will ever match that hash. So in other words, you are making it so that no password is valid to get to the root account. And uh, doing this, uh, let's try doing this for root, for example. So if I do this uh, like this, I'm going to apply the lock uh, option of the password. I obviously need pseudo privileges to do that. N uh, s notice that it does say password expiry information changed. And now if I do try to use an SU command to get to root, I will not be able. I am writing the same password as before, but this time it doesn't work because again, there is no valid password to the root account. Now, this is one thing. And but still, you you notice that I can always type in the sudo su instead and use my own sudo pa uh, password. In this case, again, there is a five minute delay with the sudo. So since I did sudo uh, command before, I'm not being asked for my password. But I would need at the very least to know the the root the sorry the sudo password of my account. And this is the only password that matters now. Instead of having to worry about two passwords, we only have to worry about one, which is the sudo one. And uh, once you implement something like this, another interesting thing to do is to essentially establish a strong password uh, kind of policy, if you will, on your machine. Because Linux really does not enforce anything with regards to kind of passwords or you can make your passwords as weak as you want, but you most likely don't want them to be weak because then it's very easy to crack them with uh, tools such as Hashcat or with tools such as uh, John the Ripper, to name a few. So. In order to make a good password, you need, uh, I would say, three things. 
the first thing is that you need it to be you need it to be long and when i mean long i mean longer than uh, 12 maybe 16 digits so that it's very hard to be, break it by brute, brute forcing it quite, uh, quite simply brute forcing a password means trying all the combinations from a uh, from a then b then c and then increasing the number of digits so a a a a b a c etc this is kind of how brute forcing works so a good password has to be uh, to be good against that so it needs to be again um, it needs to be long and the second thing that you need for your password is you need it to be kind of easy to remember and this is important because uh, if it's easy to remember you don't need to write it down and writing down pass passwords is very bad is a very bad idea because again it's obvious that if anything, anyone finds your wrote and the note you wrote down with your password, it's going to be bad for you. And the third thing that you need for your password is you need it to be unrelated to you as a person, because a lot of hackers also use uh, tools such as uh, tools such as what we call social engineering. And social engineering is essentially when a hacker he tries to gather information on you as a person and tries to use that to, let's say, uh, guess what your password is. So, for example, if if a hacker have, if a hacker happens to know what your what your pet's name is or maybe what date you were born, he can try to put this uh, alongside other password to try uh, other password kind of candidates and uh, try to break your password by guessing what it is based on what you know. So you really want uh, these three things out of a password. In order to have all three, I would say that the, the easiest alternative is to have not passwords, but to have passphrases. And uh, they are kind of what the name implies. So they are essentially very long phrases. And uh, usually you, the least you can go with is four or five words. And the, the phrase doesn't have to make sense, but it has to contain five to four, uh, four to five random words. So, for example, if you wanted to make a passphrase, you would open up the English dictionary and uh, you would g uh, start getting random words. So let's say that if I start where I am, I'm going to get uh, four not so random words because I'm looking around. But let's say I have a table, I have a screen, I have a, t I have a, a computer, I don't know, I have a wall. And this is kind of the candidate password. Now, this is already very strong because it's very, very long. It's not going to be broken by brute force. And it's not. It's also not going to be broken by social engineering because, again, this has nothing to do with me. Maybe it has a bit because I chose it based on my surroundings, but uh, the, it would still be very hard to guess it by social engineering. And obviously, if you do it correctly, if you open up a dictionary and you start getting random words, then you're not prone to social engineering either. So this is one thing. And if you want to make it even more secure because there are, say, websites on the Internet that enforce that you use, for example, digits and uppercase and lowercase, then you can take this candidate password and you can start uh, manipulating it. So, for example, replace this O here with uh, an underscore, for example, or replace this A with uh, an M percent, maybe not even an M percent, maybe an uppercase M. I mean, you have to make substitutions that make no sense. And uh, I'm making a point not to use lead speech here because let's say, Lead speech would be something like if I wrote these two uh, these two E's in screen as two trees, for example. This is called lead speech, and this is kind of very easy to crack because, again, most hackers, they expect you, expect you to use uh, lead speech in your passwords. So lead speech substitutions are really not good. You have to go as random as possible. So you need to, re uh, to replace letters with symbols that have nothing to do. And you also can replace, for example, lowercase letters with uh, uppercase letters that have no relation to the original. And this is very easy to memorize because, again, there are, these are words. And then you add a bit of overhead in terms of what you memorize. You do need to remember, for example, that your O is replaced with an underscore or that your A is replaced with an M. But notice that still it's very it's much easier to remember than if you generated a very random uh, string of digits, for example. And it's still just as hard, if not hard for if not harder for a real hacker to try to crack this. And uh, again, with regards to the Linux uh, password, so this should be this should make for a very strong password. Obviously, don't use this one because I just shown it. But uh, use something similar that you make using the again the um, the technique that I shown you, and you should be good to go. Uh, and uh, on the topic of that, so just before I go, I also I would also like to talk about password managers. And password managers, they are essentially kind of databases 
uh, secure databases that keep all your passwords. So if you are interested, I may talk about them in the future, but know that you can also use them in order to not only uh, keep all your passwords safe and in order to also generate passwords quickly. So this is important because we have a lot of accounts in different sites and you really don't want to link, for example, your Facebook account or your Twitter account to a specific site in order to make a sign in. You really want to have unique and good passwords set on each pa uh, set on each site. So you can use password managers uh, for that. I'm going to talk about them more in detail on the next video, most likely. But this is a good introduction, so you may start looking them up if that interest is if this interests you in any way. So this is it for now, and thank you very much, guys.